Welcome to part 5 in our free RTOS on the RP2040 tutorial. Today we are going to be covering semaphores. We are going to cover what semaphores are, why you would want to use one, and finally we will go through an example of how to implement one in your projects. If you haven't seen the previous video in this tutorial series, then I would encourage you to check them out. We have covered how to set up the free RTOS environment in VS Code, then we have covered tasks, priorities and scheduling, and most recently we've discussed mutexes. I will leave a playlist link down in the video description. If these videos have been helping you to learn free RTOS, then please subscribe to stay up to date with new free RTOS tutorials. Right, so let's get into what a semaphore is. There are two main types of semaphores, binary semaphores and counting semaphores. So let's start with binary semaphores. These are very similar to mutexes that we covered in the previous video tutorial. Both a mutex and a binary semaphore can have a value of 1 or 0. Think of a binary semaphore as a queue that can only hold one item. It can only be empty or full. Binary semaphores and mutexes differ in the fact that whilst the mutex has a priority inheritance mechanism, the binary semaphore does not. As we previously discussed, the priority inheritance mechanism essentially makes sure that the high priority tasks aren't blocked forever whilst waiting for a mutex. This difference in functionality makes semaphores the better choice for implementing task synchronization between tasks or between tasks and an interrupt, and mutexes are the better choice for implementing mutual exclusion or resource protection. Let's use an example of how you could use a binary semaphore. Imagine that we have a task that is to service a peripheral. The task could constantly poll the peripheral, but this would be a waste of available CPU resources. Instead, we would want the task to remain in the block state for as long as possible until it actually has something to do. Whilst the task is blocked, other tasks are able to run, making more effective use of the CPU resources. This can be implemented by making the task block whilst it tries to take the binary semaphore. An interrupt routine is written for the peripheral that simply gives the semaphore when there is something to do with the peripheral. The task can then take this semaphore and then service that peripheral. The task never gives the semaphore back, and this is an example of synchronization using a binary semaphore. Now the other type of semaphore, the counting semaphore, can be thought of as a queue with a length greater than 1. The data in the queue is not important, only whether the queue is full or empty. Typically, counting semaphores are used for two different things, counting events and resource management. Let's start with an example of a counting event. Imagine we have an event handler which gives a semaphore every time some event occurs. This process increments the value of the semaphore. A handler task can then take the semaphore and process the event. This then decrements the semaphore. The value of the semaphore is the difference between the number of events that have occurred and the number of events that have been processed. Hopefully you can see that in this situation it is preferable that the semaphore value is kept as close to zero as possible. This method can be quite effective at keeping track of events and making sure that they are all processed properly even if there is a backlog. The other use of this type of semaphore is resource management. Imagine that the count of the semaphore indicated the number of resources available, whatever resource that may be. To control a resource, the task must first obtain a semaphore, which decrements the semaphore value, indicating fewer resources are available to use. If there are no semaphores remaining, then there are no resources available for a task to use. Once a task has finished using the resource, then it must give it the semaphore back, which allows other tasks to use the resource. So hopefully that has given you an idea of what semaphores are and how they might be useful or helpful in your programs. These are a couple of functions that you will need to use in order to use semaphores in your projects. To create a binary semaphore, we use the x semaphore create binary function. To create a counting semaphore, we use the x semaphore create counting function, which has the arguments of the maximum counter value and its initial value. Then, to give and take semaphores, we have the x semaphore give function, which has the argument of the handle, of the handle to the semaphore you are giving, and then we have uh, x semaphore take, which takes the arguments of the semaphore handle, and then the time in ticks to wait for that semaphore to become available. Now I think we have pretty much everything we need for an example. I'm going to create a basic program that uses a counting semaphore as an event counter. The event being counted is a button press 
and the event process is going to be turning on an LED for a second. I'm going to use the project template that we created in the first part of this video, and that is available on our GitHub. I'll put a link down in the video description. The written version of this code will also be available on our website, which will also be linked down below. I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi Pico, which is mounted to a Grove Shield, and connect a push button to GPIO pin 20. You most certainly don't have to use this Grove configuration, you can just wire up a normal push button to pin 20. I am just testing this Grove kit at the moment. In terms of code, firstly we need to modify the free RTOS config.h file to enable counting semaphores. We change the zero next to config use counting semaphores to a one. You can enable a host of other things in this file, such as time slicing if you want to, but I'm not going to do that for this project. We can then save and close the free RTOS config.h file. Then we open our main.c file and we need to add the semaphore header file called semaphore.h or semphr.h. Then we create a semaphore handle which is called count. I'm then going to clear the contents of the LED task infinite loop as we'll replace that later. Then I'm going to create a task outline called button task. In our main function, we need to actually create our semaphore by setting um, count equal to the x semaphore creates counting function. And we're going to give this semaphore a max contents of 5 and a starting value of 0. Then we need to make sure we start our second task with the x task create function. I'm going to keep the priorities of the tasks the same. We are now done with our main function. We now need to create a, the button task which will poll the status of the button, then give the semaphore if it detects a button press. I am aware that an interrupt would be a much more suitable option rather than polling the button, but we haven't covered hardware interrupts just yet in this free RTOS tutorial series. I'm going to cover them first before I introduce them in an example. Firstly, we need to configure GPIO pin 20 as an input using the GPIO init and GPIO set direction functions. Then I'm going to create an infinite while loop which has a simple if statement. If the function detects a button press, then it will give the semaphore to the count semaphore uh, using the x semaphore give function. Then it will delay for around 20 ticks. This lets the other task run as well as avoiding a single press being registered as multiple button presses. Then we write an else statement which just delays for a tick. Then in our LED task we create another if statement. This one simply checks if the semaphore can be taken by checking to see if the x semaphore take function returns the value of PD true. If it does, then this if statement will turn on the LED and delay for around 100 ticks or approximately one second. If it can't take the, uh, the semaphore, the else statement will simply turn off the LED and then delay. You can now build the project and if you upload it to your Pico and press the push button, then you should see the LED light up for a second or so. If you press the button more times, then the LED should stay on for longer. Hopefully this has demonstrated how counting semaphores work and explains the example of the event handler and event processor that we explained a bit earlier. So that is it for today's video. Just a quick summary. We covered what semaphores are, why and when you would want to use one, and finally we went through an example of how to implement one in your projects. Stay tuned for the next video in this series, where we are going to be covering SMP, or Symmetric Multiprocessing, which should be an exciting video. Please leave a like on the video if you have learned something, and leave any comments or questions down below. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a nice day.